Hello and welcome to another episode of today's GK. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment we bring to you 10 questions on a daily basis from the point of view of prelims. So let's begin with the practice question of 16th November. Consider the following statements with reference to over the top platforms. Statement 1. These are audio and video hosting and streaming services offered directly to viewers via the internet. Statement 2. These platforms are currently working under the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Look at the options which of the following statements given above are, is or are correct. A1 only, B2 only, C both 1 and 2 or D neither 1 nor 2. Let's look at the answer for this. It's A, one only. So the government has brought video streaming over the top platforms such as Netflix, Amazon's Prime Video, Hotstar under the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. Hence, statement 2 is incorrect. Over the top platforms are audio and video hosting and streaming services which started as a content hosting platform but soon they also started featuring in the production and release of short movies, feature films, documentaries and web series. These platforms offer a range of content and they also use artificial intelligence in order to provide the viewers what they want to watch. So far in India, there are no laws or rules which regulate the content on over the top platforms. It might blow your mind that in the year 2012, there were only two OTT platforms that were working in India. But if we talk about 2020, there are now 30. All right. So moving forward, let's look at the next question. The right to constitutional remedies is a a legal right. B. Natural right, C. Fundamental right or D. Moral right. The correct answer is, it's C. Let's look at it. C is fundamental right. So, the right to constitutional remedy is referred as the conscience of the constitution. As without this right, all the rights will negate themselves. That is why Dr. B. R. Ambedkar has said that Article 32 is the heart and soul of the Constitution. So, the Supreme Court under Article 32 and the High Court under Article 226 shall have power to issue directions or orders or writs for the enforcement of any one of the fundamental rights recognized by the const Constitution. The writs, if we talk about, there are habeas corpus, mandamus, prohibition, certiorari. Alright? And co warrant is also there. So the two provisions are not mutually ex exclusive. But if any aggrieved party wants to get itself a remedy, then he or she can either move to the Supreme Court or the High Court. The Supreme Court has ruled that Article 32 is the basic feature of the Constitution. Hence, option C is correct. Now, consider the following statements about Kochi Mangluru natural gas pipeline project. So, the first statement say, Krishna river flows across Kochi Mangalore pipeline project. Second, it is an 800 kilometer long natural gas pipeline which was launched in 2009. Now look at the statements, you have to tell which of these statements given above is are correct. A1 only, B2 only, C both 1 and 2 and D neither 1 nor 2. I hope you have thought it through. So the correct answer for this is D, neither one nor two. All right. The Kochi Mangalore Natural Gas Pipeline project is finally ready for commissioning as Gale India has completed its construction over five, 540 meter treacherous stretch across the Chandragiri River in northern Kerala. Hence statement one is not correct. The 444 kilometer long natural gas pipeline was launched in the year 2009 with an estimated cost of 2,915 crore rupees and it was to be commissioned in the year 2014, hence statement 2 is not correct. The project got delayed due to its opposition with respect to safety and commercial grounds wherein the land price was the main bone of contention and this led to the 
project costing nearly over rupees 5750 crore rupees the pipeline will supply gas to all the seven districts it passes through like arnakulam thrissur palakkad mallapuram kozhikode kannur and kasargod as well as the hilly vayanad region if we talk about vayanad it's famous for vayanad wildlife sanctuary which was constructed in the year 1973 and is a part of the nilgiri biosphere reserve moving forward to the explanation of with the commissioning of the pipeline gas demand in the state will touch 80 to 90 million cubic meters per annum which is an increment from 60 million cubic meters now apart from huge environmental gain the state will also have a lot of economic gain because it will get up to rupees 1000 crore by a way of taxes alone now let's look at the next question with reference to quick reaction surface to air missile consider the following statement statement 1 is a it is a short range surface to air missile system developed by the defense research and development organization second the missile is capable of providing air defense on the move and has a range of 25 to 100 kilometers now you have to tell that which of the statements given above is or are correct a1 only b2 only c both 1 and 2 and d neither 1 nor 2 so i hope you have answered it correctly in your minds the correct answer for this is answer a one only so recently the defense research and development organization successfully test fired quick reaction surface to air missile at the integrated test range at chandipur of odisha coast and the qr sam is a canister based system which means that it is stored and operated from a specially designed compartment in the canister the inside environment is controlled thus along with making this its transport as well as storage easier the shelf life of the particular uh, missile also increases all right also it is a short range surface to air missile and primarily designed and developed by drdo to provide a protective shield to moving armored columns of the army from enemy aerial attack that means attack from the air the entire weapon system is capable of providing air defense on the move it has been designed for induction into the army and has a range of 25 to 30 km hence statement 2 is not correct now moving forward it consists of a fully automated command as well as control system two radars are also present active array battery surveillance radar active array battery multifunction radar and one launcher both radars have 360 degree coverage with a search on move and track on move capabilities the system is compact it uses a single stage solid propelled missile and has a mid course navigation system with two way data link and terminal active seeker developed indigenously by drdo look at this question wholesale price index published is published by which of the following a labor bureau b office of economic advisor ministry of commerce and industry c central statistical organization or d reserve bank of india I hope you have answered it correctly. The correct answer for this is option B, which was Office of Economic Advisor, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Moving to the explanation, India's wholesale price inflation quickened at the highest level in eight months, which has reached one point four eight percent in October twenty twenty, as per provisional data, compared with. 0% in October 2019 and 1.32% in September this year wholesale price index or wpi measures the change in the prices of goods sold and traded in bulk by wholesale businesses to other businesses 
it is the most widely used inflation indicator in india and is published by the office of economic advisor ministry of commerce and industry all right so all transactions at the first point of bulk sale in the domestic market are included and major criticism for this particular index is that the general public does not buy goods at the wholesale price the base year for all india's wpi has been revised from 2004-5 to 2011-12 in the year 2017 hence option b is correct now look at the next question polavaram project recently in news is being constructed on which river you have to answer this a godavari river b kaveri river c krishna river or d penna river so the correct answer for this is answer a which is godavari river all right let's look at the explanation recently the andhra pradesh government has said that the height of the polavaram dam will not be reduced and that the project would be completed by next year polavaram project is located in andhra pradesh on the river godavari and it is near the polavaram village also it is a multi purpose irrigation project as the project once completed will provide irrigation benefits and it will generate hydroelectric power in addition this project will also supply drinking water which is advantageous it will facilitate an inter basin transfer of water to the krishna river basin through its right canal it will also provide indirect benefits such as development of pisciculture that is breeding and rearing of fish tourism and the project has been accorded national project status by the union government in the year 2014 under section 90 of andhra pradesh reorganization act 2014 hence option a is correct now look at this question consider the following south korea japan usa china australia and new zealand which of the countries given above is are part of the regional comprehensive economic partnership rcep a 1 2 3 4 and 5 b 2 3 4 5 and 6 c 1 2 4 5 6 d 1 2 3 4 and 6 so we discussed about rcep yesterday only and uh, we discussed about its ramifications as well and which countries are going to be a part of it so i hope you have answered this question correctly the correct answer for this is option d that means 1 2 3 4 and 6 south korea china japan australia as well as new zealand so the regional comprehensive economic partnership has come into being on the sidelines of the 37th asean summit and it consists of 10 association of southeast asian nations members as well as south korea china japan australia as well as new zealand is it excludes the usa which withdrew from the trans pacific partnership in the year 2017 and negotiations over the rcep deal started in 2012 of which india was a part since the beginning but it pulled out because this particular deal would hurt its local producers it pulled out in the year 2019 members of the rcep consist of nearly a third of the world's population and also 29% of the global gross domestic product it will emerge as the largest free trade agreement in the world which is bigger than the us mexico canada agreement as well as the european union if india was a part of it it would have gained 1.1% of the gdp by the year 2030 according to some analysts all right so it is expected to eliminate a range of tariffs of or on imports within 20 years and it also includes provisions on intellectual property telecommunications financial services e-commerce as well as
professional services. Now look at this question. With reference to crew 1 mission, consider the following statements. First, it is the first of six crewed missions that NASA and SpaceX will operate as a part of the commercial crew program. Second, its objective is to make access to space easier in terms of its cost so that cargo and crew can be easily transported to and from the International Space Station, enabling greater scientific research. Which of the statements given above is are correct? A. One only. B. Two only. C. Both one and two. D. Neither one nor two. So, I hope you have answered it in your minds correctly. The correct answer for this is C, both 1 and 2. So, as a part of NASA's first commercial human spacecraft system in history, a crew of four astronauts is now en route to the International Space Station on a 27-hour flight on board SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft, which is called Resilience. Hence, statement 1 is correct. Crew-1 is the first operational flight of SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft on a Falcon 9 rocket to the ISS, that means International Space Station, and is also the first of the three such flights scheduled over the co course of entire 2020 and 2021. So, the program is a way to reduce the cost of going to space for agencies such as NASA and also makes it possible for any individual to buy a ticket on a commercial rocket. Therefore, the launch is being seen as the beginning of a new era in space travel. All right. The, this partnership will change the arc of human space flight history by opening an access to lower Earth orbit and the International Space Station to more people, more science, and more commercial opportunities. Hence, statement 2 is correct. Now look at this question. Sur Sarovar recently declared a Ramsar site is located in which state? A. Bihar B. Uttar Pradesh C. Haryana and D. Punjab So, I hope you have answered it correctly in your minds. The correct answer for this question is B, that is Uttar Pradesh. Sur Sarovar Lake is also known as Keetham Lake and it is situated within the Sur Sarovar Bird Sanctuary which was declared as a bird sanctuary in the year 1991. This lake is situated alongside the river Yamuna in Agra, Uttar Pradesh and the Sur Sarovar Bird Sanctuary covers an area of 7.97 square kilometer. It is today home to more than 165 species of migratory as well as resident birds. It also has a bear rescue center for rescued dancer bears. With the Ramsar status, the sites will benefit in terms of international policy, publicity and prestige. They will get financial aid through the convention's grant and also access to expert advice on the national and site-related problems. Hence, option B is correct. Now, look at this question. With reference to Munda Rebellion, consider the following statements. First, it is a peasant movement. Second, it is also known as the Ulgulan or the Great Tumult Movement. It used traditional symbols and language to rouse people. Which of the statements given above is R correct? A. 1 and 2 only. B. 2 and 3 only. C. 1 and 3 only. And D. All of the above. So, I hope you have answered it correctly in your minds. Let look at, let's look at the answer. The correct answer is B. 2 and 3 only. So, the Munda Rebellion is one of the most important tribal movements in India. Hence, statement 1 is not correct. It was led by Birsa Munda in the south of Ranchi in 1899-1900. The movement identified the following forces as the cause of misery. The Mundas were suffering. What were these? The land policies of the British, which was destroying their traditional land system. 
Hindu landlords and moneylenders who were taking over their land. Missionaries were criticizing their traditional culture. The Ulgulan or the Great Tumult, as the movement came to be called, aimed at establishing Munda Raj by driving out the British. Munda used traditional symbols and language to rouse people, urging them to destroy Ravana, the Kus or outsiders and the Europeans, and establish a kingdom under his leadership. Hence, statement 2 and 3 are correct. So, Birsa's followers began targeting symbols of Diku and European power. They attacked police stations and churches and raided the property of moneylenders and zamindars. They raised the white flag as a symbol of Birsa Raj. On 3rd March 1900, Birsa Munda was arrested by the British police while he was sleeping with his tribal guerrilla army at Jamkopai Forest in Chakradharpur. That is in Jharkhand. Birsa died of cholera in the jail and the movement ebbed. About Birsa Munda, he was born on 15th November 1875 and he belonged to the Munda tribe in Chota Nagpur Plato area. Also known as Dharti Abba or Father of the Earth, Birsa Munda is known to have mobilized the tribal community against the British and had also forced the colonial officials to introduce laws protecting the land rights of tribals. Having gained awareness of the British colonial ruler and the efforts of the missionaries to convert tribals to Christianity, Birsa started the faith of Birsaid. Members of the Munda and Orao community joined the Birsaid sect and it turned into a challenge to British conversion activities. Further, he urged the Mundas to give up drinking liquor, clean their village and stop believing in witchcraft as well as sorcery. Now, look at this question. With reference to Forest Rights Act, consider the following statements. Statement 1. Forest rights can also be claimed by any member or community who has for at least two generations primarily resided in forest land for bona fide livelihood needs. Second, the Gram Sabha is the authority to initiate the process for determining the nature and extent of forest rights. Which of the following statements given above is or are correct? A. One only. B. Two only. C. Both one and two. And D. Neither one nor two. The correct answer for this question is B. That is two only. So let's look at the explanation. A review petition of approximately 1200 tribals for recognition of their claims over forest land under scheduled tribes and other forest dwellers recognition of forest rights act 2006 was rejected by the local authorities in Mysuru, Karnataka. The forest rights act recognizes and vests the forest rights and occupation in forest land in forest dwelling scheduled tribe FDST and other traditional forest dwellers or OTFD who have been residing in such forest for generations. Forest rights can also be claimed by any member or community who has for at least three generations, that is 75 years prior to the 13th of December 2005, primarily resided in forest for bona fide livelihood needs. So, statement 1 is not correct. It strengthens the conservation regime of the forest while ensuring livelihood and food security of the FDST and OTFD. The Gram Sabha is the authority to initiate the process for determining the nature and extent of individual forest rights or community forest rights or both that may be given to FDST and OTFD. The Act identifies four types of rights. Let's look at them. Title Rights. It gives FDST and OTFD the right to ownership to land farmed by tribals or forest dwellers, which is subject to a maximum of four hectares. Ownership is only for land that is actually being cultivated by the concerned family 
and no new lands will be granted then comes user rights the rights of the dwellers extend to extracting minor forest produced grazing areas etc relief and development rights are also there to rehabilitate in case of illegal eviction or forced displacement and to basic amenities subject to restriction of forest protection forest management right includes the right to protect regenerate or conserve or manage any community forest resource which they have been traditionally protecting and conserving for sustainable use now for the next meeting i am going to give you a practice question for which you have to comment in the comment section all right so pneumonia and diarrhea progress report is released by which of the following institutes world health organization united nations children fund then comes international vaccine access center and the global alliance for vaccine and immunization so please comment the correct answer in the comment box as for now i am concluding the segment tomorrow i am going to meet again with you till then stay updated and thank you so much for watching